Towards the end of 2013, we showed you interviews from the Nebraska Soybean Day and Machinery Expo in Wahoo. The event is sponsored in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board and presents updated research and checkoff information and also provides growers with current market and weather conditions. One presenter there was Illinois farmer Marion Kelmer. Marion grows corn and soybeans in western Illinois and is also the owner of Kelmer Cornheads. Through his on-farm research, he's found growing soybeans in 15-inch rows at 75,000 plants per acre is his most profitable option. At the event, Marion shared five tips for growing profitable soybeans, including using no-till, dry fertilizer, narrow row spacing, seeding rates, and residue management. We talked with Marion to see how these things have played a role in increasing profitability on his acres. I've got about 500 that I do the, all of the research on in, in western Illinois. It's uh, Ipava, Tama soils, uh, poorly drained, uh, but very, very, very productive. Why have you put such an emphasis on trying to do research on your farm? Well, in the mid-80s, I bought my first farm, and I said, you know, if I'm going to pay for this ground, I better, I better farm as profitable as I can. So I started doing a little bit of on-farm research, and of course now we run one of the largest independent ag research center. So I don't allow anybody to give me any money to do research because you've got the chance to alter your opinion. Um, I figure at my farming operation, the things that I have learned over the past 20, 30 years are, are giving me an annual return of about $50,000 a year. I only spend a couple of days in the spring. I maybe slow down. Instead of you know being done in seven days, and it maybe takes me nine days to plant. And, but for a couple days in the spring and a couple days at harvest time, I, I'm making $50,000. That's pretty good money. And, uh, and at the same time, I think doing a little something for the environment. Is it something that you think every farmer could do? Oh, absolutely. I, I tell everybody that um, we can't improve on things we don't measure. And we're, we're, you know, we're farmers. We're always going to be farmers. But gosh, you wake up in the morning and it's just like you got to put your business hat on and you got to be able to run the calculator and you've got to have information to feed the calculator with. And like I'm telling these guys right here, if you got a thousand acres of beans, two pieces of information that we provided today is worth about over a 10 year run, is worth over three quarters of a million dollars. One of the things that you found benefit in is no-till. Why do you think it's worked so well for you? Well, I, I think, you know, it's mother nature's natural cover to the earth is, is the residue. And if we take that away, we become vulnerable to water and wind erosion. And it's just, there's no upside to it. The soil only reproduces itself at the rate of about one sheet of paper per year. And that means I'm buying several of the farms that I own. I don't want to see it washed down there. And I've got a daughter coming along and she doesn't want to see it washed away. So I think we've got a responsibility to the environment. Uh, number two though, it's also got to be profitable. In the early years, yeah, it was kind of give or take. I was learning, it was kind of awkward. But then boy, once we got about five years down range on no-till, and things started kicking in. And now it's just an annual uh, return of seeing how moist that soil is. We had, we've had two nasty droughts in Western Illinois. I mean, the end of June, it just stops raining and it gets hot. And we've had wonderful crops. I, I guarantee you, if I was under a full tillage system, I wouldn't have had near the crop that I did in a no-till environment. If I remember right, your soybean population is around 75,000. Tell me how you got set up in that oh. because there's a lot of numbers involved. Oh yeah, I, I went to college and we, I used to plant them at 200,000 when I was a kid. And so I started doing the research on it. And I said, you know what, that, that's fine. You can tell me anything you want and you can pick up any bit of information and read it. At the end of the day, if you want me to spend another 25 bucks an acre, I gotta have $30 worth of grain to pay for the cost of the seed. And my farm, it, it's just not there. We've, we've got over five years worth of data, long, narrow, replicated plots out there. So we're, we've got uh, um, probably 40 to 50 replications side by side. 75,000 on the screen at planting time is my most profitable soybean population, which is contrary to what you're gonna read or any seed person's gonna say. Nothing personal with the seed industry, it's just bottom line. 75,000 the most profitable at my farm. Your row spacing is uh, mostly in 15 inch rows, is that correct? Yep. What are the pros and cons to that? I mean, I know a lot of people have done research on this and the one thing that I know has been a con in some areas is that they find more disease pressure between oh, yeah. the row when the plants are close together. You're, you're exactly right. As, as we bring that canopy in tighter and tighter, um, we've got, it, it's gonna take longer to burn the fog out in the fall and the moisture's gonna be there, which sets us up for white mold. On the flip side of that is when we put population and row spacing together, 
And if I'm planting narrow road beans at 75,000, then I've got a more open canopy that allows the air to go through there. So when I'm in the low hundreds to 75,000, I don't see the white mold. And so I'm okay in those narrow row spacings. Drilled beans work really well. At the end of the day, soybeans are a legume. Alfalfa is a legume. It doesn't make any sense to put legumes in rows. It's, it's abnormal. And I don't think alfalfa likes it. I don't think the soybeans like it. Solid seeded is the concept. Looking at anything interesting for 2014 or anything different this year? Um, on the soybean side of things, we're still pretty much status quo here. Um, we're you know playing around a little bit with some combine stuff on that. On the flip side, on producing corn, one of the new and exciting areas is that we're starting to breed corn plants and they're changing very rapidly. They're gonna be shorter in height. There's gonna be a smaller tassel. They're still gonna have the same number of leaves and they're gonna have smaller ears. There's just gonna be a lot more of them in the field. Corn is a grass, solid seeded, smaller ears and a lot more of them because we have got to get to 300 bushel and we need as farmers, our responsibility is to start to learn how to do it today so that we can pass it on to future generations. In 30 years, each and every one of us will be responsible for 300 bushel of the acre in order to feed the demand that corn will have 30 years from now.